Okay, hi there, welcome back. In the next in our series of key diagram videos, we're going to develop the protectionism import tariff diagram and think about how you can show the welfare effects from this kind of trade restriction. Now, developing uh, that diagram will get you higher marks for analysis and also help to support stronger evaluation, particularly when you're trying to evaluate and discuss and assess who wins and who loses from trade protectionism. So here's our import tariff diagram. The original price uh, with, with trade was P2, free trade, but uh, let's assume the government introduces a tariff on steel, which lifts the price from P2 to P3. The consequence we found was that there was a fall in domestic demand from Q2 to Q4. That's because steel prices are higher, so the real incomes of steel buyers goes down. Uh, domestic producers, however, benefit from an increase in production from Q3 to Q5, an expansion up their supply curve from point E to point F, because they're now better able to compete uh, with other steel producers because of the imposition of the tariff. The consequence is that the quantity or the volume of imports falls from Q3, Q2 to Q5, Q4. So the tariff, in a sense, it's doing its job in restricting imports and expanding domestic production. What about consumer welfare? This is a key one. Well, consumer surplus before the tariff was area A, D, P2. Consumers were able to buy steel fairly cheaply giving them a high level of consumer surplus at quantity Q2. After the tariff, the price has gone up and demand has contracted. So consumer surplus post-tariff is area A, G, P3. So there's been a loss of consumer surplus equal to the area P3, G, D, P2. Now, some of that has gone to the producer. So domestic producer surplus, just focusing now on domestic steel producers, before the tariff, at the low price P2, their surplus was area P2EC, only that small triangle there. As a result of the tariff, they can now produce more and get a better price, a higher price for their steel. So post-tariff, producer surplus is area P3FC. So the area P3, F, E, P2 has gone from consumer to producer. Uh, governments will get some tax revenue. I've added two more letters. So the government tax revenue from the tariff is the tax per unit multiplied by the quantity of imports. And the quantity of imports is Q5, Q4. So government tax revenue is area F, G, I, H. Which means that there's been, uh, we remember that the falling consumer surplus was P3, G, D, P2. Some of that's gone to the producer. Some of it's gone to the government in tax revenue. But some of it is lost because of the higher price they must pay now for steel. So, in fact, there are two deadweight loss uh, of welfare areas. And they are... Oh, so, there's the tax revenue. And here's the deadweight loss coming in. E, F, H plus G, D, I. Those are the two areas of deadweight welfare loss as a result of the tariff protection. Now this diagram here labelled, although I did shade the tax revenue, but labelled is much better way of showing it as a result of a tariff. And that's a great diagram to draw and it might be well worth taking a screenshot for your revision notes. Do remember that many countries also use non-tariff barriers. Good examples there include import quotas and also subsidies paid to domestic producers. And they're both also uh, restrictions on international trade. And these two can also be used as a uh, analysis diagrams if requested by a question. OK, that was the video looking at import tariffs and the important potential welfare effects. Thank you.